Monster Kill. So welcome guys to the second mission which is actually the fourth. This is seen here, continuing my Alita Blood campaign. So as it turns out, Ziggy and Churkes went to the mm, bottom of the lake instead of Davle. And Ziggy is looking for his Ziggy at the bottom of the lake. Alright, time to get out of here. Come on Ziggy, what the... <gasps> oh shit. That feels nice. Alright, let's move. So we should check where the fuck are we. Yep, right in the middle of fucking nowhere. And as it turns out, our objective is about two clicks from us. But we don't have to walk anymore. And also in this campaign, every good mission starts with the smoke. And even now you can hear the relief of Tsigi as he is taking a Tsigi. As I mentioned on the previous mission, I will reveal more of the story as I pass through the missions. So, I said a few words about Tsigi and Churkes. Now, Tsigi actually has a name, he is called Rahim Yusuf, and Churkes is Kian Amin, as you can hear on the radio too. So, I should clear up the bit where you were wondering why does. Ziggy always called Churkes Amin. Uh, that is the reason. If you pay any kind of attention to the dialogues, which I doubt, you can see a name Fos Vites 5. Uh, how should I translate? Come on. Uh, Vites is a brave warrior, and Fos, well, I guess you found out already. If not, then it means a dick. So, dick brave warrior 5 maybe. Anyway, apart from the language lesson, Fos Vites 5 is actually our next teammate called Private Bastia. Now Bastia means the bastion like the ones you find on castles, but it can be used like Batya, so a really good friend. That should also clear up if you've been wondering why I use the word Batya so many times. Well, that means a good friend, like I said. So Private Bastia or Navid Kushan is going to be your machine gunner, and he's also a stoner. And we arrive at our second vehicle, which is the Icarus 260, a fine piece of Hungarian automotive engineering, best bus on the fucking planet. Just look at the dashboard, man. And oh god, that sound. Now that is the familiar sound. Now the funny thing about this bus is that it's actually slower than our bike from the previous mission. Well, sometimes slower, sometimes faster. Now. It's pretty much slower. Alright, the dialogue is about the superior of Ziggy. Cosine Ziggy's the boss or Zigpack in case you don't remember. Yeah, as you can see during the earlier stages of the campaign, Ziggy always gets scolded by Ziggy's the boss. I guess you're not wondering why. Another funny or unique thing is that it also has some blinkers that are actually functional. Which is pretty surprising. And now it actually goes 65, which is faster than our bike. Okay, turning coming. Ah oh, shit! Now oh, I fucked up. Oh man, and now I don't see shit. Alright, time to drive GTA style. Okay, zoom out a bit. Yeah, much better. Now I'm coming to the point where if someone would ask me what is Elite Alcolot about. Then I will just show him this footage. The Ziggy Hot, the elite squad, driving a bus that is probably three times older than me. But aside from the bus, in this mission you will see another vehicle, the Roche de Volga, which is the mission's title too. Now, the Roche de Volga or Rust Volga is a Volga that is rusty. And it also probably has more rust in its bodywork than paint. But it's still a really nice vehicle, and the most iconic vehicle of this campaign too. 
Yeah, nothing better than driving with doors opened. And we come to the part where the bus is actually slow with the fucking recycle. Going at 18, so I'm just going to fast forward this part. Okay, we're coming close. 600 meters. 400. And we are going at 92. Now that is something. 100. Whoa. Yo, the durability for Nicarus is also unparalleled. So we can just hit the house going at 100. And apart from losing our front wheels, the bus didn't even suffer any noticeable damage. And the body was fucked up, but it's still okay. Alright, some firefighting coming. Sigi, what the fuck? Why are you stuck on a bush? Just go around, it, idiot. Okay, we're just gonna send Churkas into the middle of the firefight. He'll take care of them. Yeah, I'm just gonna be the best teammate ever. Okay, there's one guy in the house. Just turn right. And he's gonna be there. Oh yeah. It's my damn. Okay, to keep it short, I'm just gonna skip to the Kias from now on and to the more important parts. Alright, there's one waiting for us here. Right over there. Yeah. I think I survived quite a few shots to the legs. But he goes down anyway. So as for the next room, I've got some better tactics for that. We're just gonna loot the sucker. Search for some explosive balls. Alright. And here comes the exploding gift. Okay, they've got their portion of explosive gifts for today. I guess we should go in. Moving cautiously this time. Yep, he's dead. Oh shit! Fuck! Oh god damn! Boss Mac, Ziggy. What the fuck were you thinking throwing a grenade next to you? It's only the fourth mission and Ziggy already has some death wish. Man, that was a close one. Astaroth. Good thing this was protect you against grenades. Okay, there you go. You know, it's funny. He survived the grenade because he was standing next to the bed. So apparently this bed is made of some explosion proof material or something. So for these two guys, we're gonna have to use a glitch that you can actually see their hands, sometimes heads, clipping through the wall. And of course I still can shoot them. Now these guys are the hardest to kill in the whole mission. So after exactly 2 hours and 25 boss mags, we finally get our chance at shooting them. Okay, he took 2 from the 50 cal. And 1 to the head. Alright. Okay, the next house. During this point, this campaign is mostly about cleaning villages, which consists of cleaning houses. But on the later stages you will get to see some more complicated action. Some open firefights, sniping, much better weapons, driving railgun tanks. Oh, driving railgun tanks. Another ball of love. And of course he survived the grenade. Well I swear, grenades are fucking worthless in this game. Now let's see if we have another explosion proof bed here. Of course these beds are explosion proof too. So where I said about more action in the later stages, you also get to drive a jet and nuke a whole city. And also classes. Siva is going to be the team leader. Sigi will be the scout, Churka stays the marksman, and Basha is going to be our machine gunner. So, we move into our last house, but not before taking a look at our beloved Roj de Volga. Now, oh, look at this fine piece of engineering. Not the nicest car in the planet, but oh, it's okay. We have another Riplodo in here, and some nice guy. Riding a bicycle on the top of a house. Uh, he must be Santa Claus or something. Although, in-game, it is December right now, so... 
Anyway, bye Santa. And there flies the bike. You know, why would you want to drive jets when you can fly bikes? Another exploding gift. Which is just like a gift. Because it doesn't do any damage to them. Well, that's an exception. Explosion proof bed? Ah, no, this time. Wait, hold on a second. Oh yeah, this is explosion proof too. Hmm, looks like they're holding some kind of Škoda meeting here. Okay, there's our friend. You ready, Churkas? You ready? Okay, we go in. I wonder if it still starts. And the door is stuck? Oh, of course not. And of course it starts. You know what they say, Russian motor never blow. Also look at the immobilization technique. You have to start it with the gear shifter stick. Okay, get in Churkas. We are going to drive some Rojda Volga. And off we go. Alright, it looks like this idiot doesn't know how to ride the bike. What the hell are you doing, man? The Lodo? Where did you get your license, idiot? What the hell are these guys doing? See? That's why I don't have a license. I drive better without license than these idiots with license. Okay, just one quick look at the exterior. Oh, just look at the beauty. Oh yeah, it's really nice. Alright, Churkas, I know what you're thinking. Of course you can drive, but just up here. And this one also has winkers. Oh, okay, man, take the wheel. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, very nice car. <laughs> sure, man? Alright. Oh, this is fucking nice, man! Yeah, let's start this shit. So, take the wheel, man. Oh, that was nice. And the chunk is functional, too. Just smoke. And we're quickly going to ditch the spare wheel. We don't need that. We need some space in the truck for something or someone bigger. That's right. Let's go, Churkas. I found some better place. This is one of the nicest things of the Rojda Volga. You can actually ride in the trunk. And as subtle as you can get. Uh oh, seems like some idiots following us. Yep, see it lying around nicely. It's pretty cozy. Okay, sure can step on it. These assholes are onto us. What the fuck does this idiot want? Come on, man. Step on it, Churkas! Shit! What do you want, idiot? We're not buying anything, Kutcher, get out of here! Now this is starting to turn into need for armor. Oh, idiot. Seriously, what was this check fate thinking? Forcing us to drive off-road. And another Volga. Who's apparently telling us. These guys are shady. And a bit more about the story. On the previous mission I mentioned that there will be two more characters on the team of Tsigi. One of them is Private Basha, who I mentioned, and the other guy is Sergeant Sivar, or Sigar. He is the right hand man of Tsigi Dobos, NCO of Tsigi, and the leader of the Tsigi Six. And next to Tsigi, the second playable character of this campaign. He is also a lot more serious than Tsigi. Hmm, if memory serves me right, mission number 12 takes place at the castle up there. Now, coming to think of it, if that idiot in the Volga behind us keeps telling us, 
I'm just gonna throw first aid kits at him. That is guaranteed to confuse that fucker. Be careful, idiota. I've got some defensive tactics up my sleeve. By the way, Churkas, are we there yet? What's taking you so long? Monster kill. Look at those JDM style mirrors. I just like that. And we have a barricade of bikes here. Just gonna go around them. Remember this guy from the previous mission? Well, I told you that you're gonna see him again. Actually, I'm coming on every mission. Also from mission number 8, he and his bike are going to be invincible, but he'll only have a bigger role on mission number 19. And it looks like Siggy has some serious blood pressure problems. And in the meanwhile there was also a VFTS loader who's going at 200 I swear. Also I love how they made it so that it's visible that he's changing gears. It's nice that they animated it. And we have arrived. Looks like the idiot Basha is hanging out somewhere here. Yep, there he is. Also, remember the flying car from the previous mission? Right at the start. It's right over there. Apparently, this idiot crashed it. Yep, that's a wreck. So, that idiot sitting up there is Private Navid Kushan, or in short, Bastia. He will be the stoner machine gunner of our team after Tsugi and Chul can successfully get him down from there. So, in the next mission, we actually get to see the real gun tank that I mentioned earlier. I fucking love that Tsugi one shots everything. And on mission number 6, we actually get to drive it. I hope to see you, Bastia, there too. So, till we meet again, stay tuned, see you out.